Growing up, Killeen, Texas, you know, uh, it's close to Austin, so I grew up watching KD. When I was young, I was like, one day I will play with Kevin Durant. You know, now, got the opportunity on here. You gotta be humble. That's all about basketball. You gotta be humble because everywhere you go, there's somebody that's gonna be good as you, or better than you, or whatever, and why it's gonna outwork me. Hey, I know my mom gonna watch this, so I just wanna say hi, mom. I love you. I'm Royce O'Neal from Killeen, Texas, to Brooklyn. So Killeen, Texas, it's better known as Fort Hood Killeen. It's a military base. It's located about 45 minutes north of Austin and 45 minutes south of Waco. So we're right there in Central Texas. Well, Killeen, Texas is pretty much the melting pot of the United States of America. It's the biggest military installation. I mean, growing up, all I did was live in the gym and at school. Pretty much two things to do, play sports and go to school. I mean, everybody's, you know, connected, you know, a small town, you know, everybody knows everybody. And uh, you know, Colleen is just, it'll always be home to me. Me and Royce's dad were college roommates and his mother and we were all friends and all that type of stuff. So I've known Royce since conception. You know, the big, you know, joke we always say, Royce was supposed to be a girl. We had two ultrasounds and you know we got his room all set up nice and pink and all that and she comes out and they say it's a bouncing baby boy she's like no it's a girl his whole room is set up as a girl he was the quietest kid so the only thing you have to give Royce is a banana lion king and rewind the only thing you had to do he never cried so when Royce was two years old he got his first Fisher Price basketball goal I thought this would be fun for him. It'll keep him busy, keep him occupied. And he loved to watch basketball with me. Every day he would play on that thing. That was his favorite toy. That was his thing. I started him in playing club basketball when he was in the third grade. And from there, he just continued to develop. Royce was actually a really good shooter. But one of the things that I used to stress to Royce when he played, I said, you gotta be able to play defense. If you can't play defense, you can't play basketball. She's had a big impact. I mean, you know, just being there always, you know, supporting, you know, setting that example and being that role model for me and showing me the person I need to be every day. And no matter what, just keep going. There's a lot of buckets on this picture, man. Let's see, let's see where the young Royce is. Freshman Royce, I was a little, a little short, short 42. And then, you know, and then varsity, double zero. You don't have to bring it back. But everybody on here, I'll still give everybody buckets. So. And we still have the best team in history, so I don't care. But yeah, just from young Royce, freshman Royce to senior Royce, what a journey it was. I ain't been in here in years. And, uh, you know, just, you know, it seems like not long ago, I was one of the little freshmen up to seniors uh, in high school. And then, uh, you know, I was here. When he got to high school, of course, as a freshman, he played on the freshman team. And then when he was a sophomore, he bounced between junior varsity and varsity. Royce never wanted to be a superstar. He was an under the rim player but he has an ultimate knack for rebounding. And he was a scorer, but it wasn't like a four scoring type of deal. But Royce is the glue player. He's a player that's gonna go out there and play defense. He's gonna set the screen. He's gonna make the extra pass. And that's what teams need, you know. I wasn't always the most athletic, but I had a lot of skill and ability and talent. And you know, just any way I could take advantage of that, you know, I was going to. It was easy for me, but hard for him, because everybody knew that I was like his dad, uncle, whatever the case you want to call it. Uh, it was a little tough. I was probably the one he coached the hardest. You know, all the guys kind of knew, like, our relationship, but I had to lead by example. You know, that connection that we have, one of those guys always around, you know, giving me knowledge, helped me out, but not showing, you know, any favoritism and just coaching. During Royce's junior year in high school, he had a season-ending injury. 
So he didn't get a lot of looks for college. You know, in high school, uh, I had broke my ankle. So I missed like second half of junior year in AU. It was tough, you know, being around the guys. I just wanted to play. But, uh, you know, just being patient with myself, you know, and trusting myself, you know, to come back even better and stronger than I was. You know, everything happens for a reason. So, and, you know, just senior year, you know, I played really well and had like, you know, a bunch of offers. And I just felt like DU at the time was a good one. He chose the University of Denver. And during his sophomore year, my father was having a lot of health issues and Royce wanted to come back and be closer to home. We're just gonna pray about it and whatever happens, happens. And as soon as he was released, I mean, my phone was ringing off the hook. Transferring to Baylor, I was you know, able to be closer to my family at the time, still getting that education. And then, you know, Baylor and being the school and basketball program that it was, you know, then welcomed me, you know, open arms. And then, you know, being able to, like, come home on weekends, you know, see family or family to come up on, on games, you know, was really great. First time I saw Royce, he was at Denver University when we realized he was going to transfer and he had some interest in us. Highly intelligent player, uh, very physical, very strong, played with an extremely good motor. Royce was somebody that was a late bloomer, uh, somebody that uh, uh, grew uh, three, four inches late. That's why his best basketball has been uh, the latter part of his career. Some people by age 17, their full manhood and their bodies are mature. Uh, Royce is someone uh, like a fine wine. He gets better with age. Huh? Baby. Baby. I was at, you know, these camps, um, you know, each summer trying to get better. So, I mean, just the feeling and being back, it's surreal. What? <laughs> he come back and do these camps for these kids and stuff like that. It really makes, you know, a big deal. I was just looking out there. We got like 135 campers that are signed up. They just want to come out and just celebrate because, you know, Royce is just a regular guy, you know. He's just a regular guy and he just still acts like that. Man, I, I think the kids have an awesome time. You know, I can just reflect back when he was here for his Georgia retirement and all the kids, and I'm looking at my high school kids, you know, and then all the kids get to live that dream. To me, that just really makes it where it makes every kid can say, hey man, that could be me. Just, you know, a Cinderella story for these kids in this military town to see that. So Royce had always said, you know, growing up that he wanted to play in the NBA. And I would always ask him, okay, what's your plan if that doesn't work out? And he said, I'm playing in the NBA. Well, 2015, he graduates from Baylor. He declares for the draft and he goes undrafted. And at that point, we had a conversation and I asked him, I said, well, what do you want to do now? And he opted to go overseas and play. I was always, you know, had that mindset I was going to make it to the NBA one day. And then, you know, the right situation worked out. And I, you know, got the opportunity with the Jazz. And then, you know, here we are today. Um, actually excited, you know, the past couple of days I've been exploring, you know, the city, um, trying to, you know, find out my little spots, you know, ways to get around, just sightseeing. Pretty much all the other guys that live here, you know, say it's going to be, you know, a really dope experience, you know, just from like the people, the atmosphere. You know, I've never been a, a big city guy, you know, uh, so it's definitely going to be a different experience. But I think, you know, another chapter in the journey. Yeah. All right, Royce, back to you. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? So that means Count in the final. I was like, I'm really in New York or Brooklyn now. Just walking around the city, you know, all the fans like showing me love and, you know, welcoming me. And then I think everybody's just excited about basketball. And, you know, you can tell it's like a culture thing, like all around the city. Overall, the experience is great. I mean, New York is like different. Um, just being out there, you know, trying to do like the little tourist things, see what spots I like eating at, you know, getting out to the community, showing face, and then being myself. Stop off, stop off. Yeah, Patty. Corner, corner. 
what he brings to us on and off the court from the, the defensive person he is, you know, being able to spread the floor like he can. We're confident in Royce. We know what he can bring to the table. He's just playing extremely hard for us. That's holding on to a one-point lead. 28 seconds left. Shot clock winding down. O'Neal! Bomb! A three! Next world exploding! I've always been kind of like overlooked, you know, whole life. But um, just taking that motivation, playing with a chip and edge on my shoulder, and then, you know, just being the best I can be.